In this Grasshopper tutorial, we're going to use a point attractor, as you can see here, and change the shape of a series of stars. So we're going to make a parametric pattern with this point attractor. And as you can see, we can also increase the number of these patterns uh, in the row and the column. So first, what I want to do is to explain the concepts behind this. Uh, before we start this from scratch, uh, what we want to do is to make a surface, so this is going to be the base surface. Then we're going to divide this surface into uh, rectangular panels, so these are going to be the panels. Assume that this is one of these panels, okay? So what we're going to do is to find the mid uh, edge of these, uh, the center of the edges, like this, and we're going to connect that to the center, so it's going to be something like this. So it's going to be like this. And then what we want to do is to move this point on this yellow line, okay? So assume that this point is going to move on this line. As you can see, it's going to make these points. And then when we have this, let me show you on this one, uh, we will have these points here. We will also use the corners like this and weave them to produce the star. So this is the logic behind making this parametric pattern with the point attractor. And at the end, uh, we're going to assign this point attractor, which will move in the surface, uh, to the moving points we had here. Okay. So again. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about this explanation before we start the tutorial. Uh, can it help you? And let's get started from scratch. Okay, before we start from scratch, uh, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Uh, you can watch this playlist up here. I will put it up here and learn what is Grasshopper, why you should learn it, and also a tutorial for beginners to understand the basics of Grasshopper. And also, if you want to learn Grasshopper uh, step by step, and we have also more advanced lessons, you can watch our course lessons here. I will put it here so you can check out what we have in our course and enroll in our course with the uh, Power Course website. So let's get started from scratch. And what we want to do is to go to the uh, surface primitive and make a plain surface. This will help us to make uh, let me just put the bifocals plug in so you can see what I'm doing and here we have this plane in the XY plane uh, I'm going to just put that as the XY plane because it's going to show you how it's going to change in a plane okay let's just give this a number uh, this input is a domain but if you give it a number what will happen is going to go from 0 to that number okay so remember that it's going to be uh, if you connect a number to a domain that's going to happen so I'm going to give that to here and to here that will help us to control the size of the X and Y of this plane the next part is to divide this plane into uh, panels I'm going to go to the surface utility we usually use this utility ISO trim to divide a surface into uh, panels. What's going to help us to do that is that we're going to give the surface, uh, the plane surface to the surface, and for the domain, uh, if you have watched our uh, tutorials, our previous tutorials, we usually use this divide domain two. And the reason we use that is that it's going to divide the domain of this surface into U count and V count and give it back to the domain. So remember, we usually use this isotrim divide domain two to divide the surface into sections. So we can just give it from 3 to maybe 12. And we're going to give that to the U count and V count. Let's just increase this and turn this off. And here we go. OK. Now we have these surfaces, which are the on-trim surface of this base surface. And remember, you can always change it if you want to. Uh, the next part is to, as I explained, extract the center uh, the mid of the edges and then connect it as a line so we can move that point on it. So I'm going to go to the surface and use this deconstruct B rep to explode the surface into faces, edges, and vertices. And let's just turn that off. Uh, for the edges, we can go to the curve and select this point on curve 
which has a number slider on it, uh, it's going to help you to find in the place on the edge. We're going to put that on the mid, which means the center, and that's exactly what we needed. Okay, the next part is to find the center of that. Uh, you can just type, double click and search for area, or go to the uh, surface and analyzes area, okay? Uh, I'm going to give that to the faces, and you can see that we have the centroid. So let's just connect that centroid to the mid edge. I'm going to go to the curve, and select this line, which is basically uh, create a line between two points. So let's just make that between two points. And you can see that if this is one of the uh, panels, we will have this division, okay? So this is what we have. The next part is that to move the point on the line. You can give this a uh, point on curve, but the problem is that, let me just turn this off, the problem here will be that it will not be as parametric as we want it because we want to give it a point attractor, but you can see the concept. Let me just turn off the centroid. You can see that this point, uh, how it's moving uh, towards the center and towards the mid edge. That's what we exactly want to do. And instead of that, we're going to use the curve, uh, evaluate curve tool to make that. Uh, we also have a great tutorial about Evaluate Curve, I'll put it up here, which is about uh, making those uh, a great parametric pattern with Evaluate Curve. So be sure to watch that tutorial also if you want to learn about Evaluate Curve. So it's really simple, it's uh, exactly like point on curve, but you have to right click on it and reparameterize this, okay? So it's going to make it from 0 to 1. And then you can give a number slider to parameter, which is basically a number between 0 and 1. You can see that it's exactly the same as point on curve, but it has the flexibility to connect a point attractor to that later. So remember, we have to, uh, after finding the point attractor, give it to the parameter. Okay, let's go uh, forward. I'm going to turn off the point on the mid edge. And we have this, okay? <clears throat> then we're going to go to the uh, Parms menu, connect a point to the vertices to just bring it up here. And now what we have to do is to make a polyline uh, like this, right? And connect these things together. Uh, if we want to select between two sets of uh, data or geometry, what we want to do is to use a Vive tool. The Vive is going to give you streams of data, so you can see it's going to be stream 0 and 1. If you just click and zoom and click on that, it's going to be multiple. You can add up to anything you want and weave that back into a data. So the uh, streams of data are these two set of points. Let's just give that to 0 and 1. And the pattern of weaving that is by default 0, 1. That means 1 by 0. And then by 1, which will be the midpoints, and then again 0, 1, 0, 1. And that will help us to make a polyline. So if I go to the curve and select this polyline here and connect that, that's going to maybe have a problem. I'm going to explain that. Uh, if you connect that uh, 0 and 1 like this, you can see it's going to give you a uh, not correct pattern here. So remember, you have to just flip that 0 and 1 or change the number of the pattern to 1, 0 if you want. Okay, now we have to just close this polyline. So I'm going to go to right click here and set the boolean to true and turn everything off. And here you can see that we can change this star pattern with this number slider. So that was the trick of how uh, we can use this to change the star uh, pattern by this number slider. Uh, the next part is to define the point attractor. And what I want to do is to use this uh, surface, base surface, and move that point attractor on that surface. So uh, you can use that. I'm going to go to the surface and use this evaluate surface to change the uh, location of the point. Uh, if you don't know about evaluate surface, uh, we have talked about this in different uh, tutorials, but if you want to uh, watch another tutorial which is about point attractors and you uh, like to know more about it, I will put it up here, which is about a wall 
and how you can use the point attractor. We have talked about the value at surface. So remember, you can also watch that. But for now, to make it just as fast as possible, we're going to give that plane to the surface. This is the place we want to move that point attractor. And uh, we have to right click and reparameterize that. So it's going to be from zero to one and zero to one. Basically, we have talked this, talked about this before, but for now, we always use an uh, evaluate surface. So remember, we give the surface to here. We reparameterize. These are the uh, steps you have to take. So give the surface to evaluate surface. The second step is to use reparameterize. And the third step is to use the MD slider. So that's not really hard. That's a technique you can always use. Uh, use the evaluate surface connected to the surface, reparameterize that. Remember, remember that the reparameterize is important because the MD slider is between 0 and 1. So if I give that uh, back to the point or the UV point, we have explained that, you can see how easy it is to move that point attractor. Okay, how can we connect this uh, point attractor to the data? Uh, I'm not going to go to the details because the point attractor thing is also uh, more complicated, but we also have several tutorials about point attractor, curve attractor, image attractor, color attractors in our course. So remember, if you want to just know that step by step, you can go in our course. But for now, what we want to do is to find a distance. So I'm going to type distance. And it's a great tool here. You can see it's going to find a distance between two points. I'm going to type dist and find the distance between this point attractor and the centroid of those panels, right? So it's going to find the distance. Uh, the trick about point attractor is what you have to do is to, if this distance can be something like this, let me just show you by a line, it's going to be like this point to this point. This is exactly what's happening. This is the distance uh, which is being calculated here. Uh, what we want to do is to use a remap. Uh, we have a remap numbers in Grasshopper, which is by default, but because I wanted to make it easier, I have made a remap plus. We have used that. Uh, and remember, always, I have put that in the, into the example file also. You can always download this remap. Remember this uh, URL, bit.ly. I make that just to download that easily, a remap plus. You can always download that from Remap Plus. And if you want to know how Remap Plus is made, it's not really complicated. You can always go to a bit.ly backslash Remap example. Okay. So because I have used that in many of my tutorials, maybe 80% of my, my tutorials have Remap Plus, which is a simplified way of using the Remap numbers. I've made that into a file and you can always install that and put it in your canvas. So now I'm going to use that remap and scale all of that distance into the minimum and the maximum, which is basically the minimum and the maximum we want to change that star. Uh, the first tip about remap, which I prefer to, because it's not really that easy to understand and put uh, one simple solution for that, but if you want to know a technique and uh, just remember this in your mind when I say this. Always, when you have a remap, don't give it a, a data which is in groups like this. Always flatten that, right-click and flatten, so the data are going to be compared together. Okay, We have talked about this in the point attractor tutorial. I've put it that in the cut section. But for now, what is going to happen is that it's going to compare all of these numbers and then scale it to the minimum and the maximum. So the first thing is to use the flatten. And if you don't know about flatten, I will put it up here, uh, which is we have talked about flatten, graph, simplify, and it's a great tutorial, OK? So remember that you can use this flatten to make that. And the minimum and the maximum is 0 point, maybe 1. We're going to start from the smallest star to the biggest star. Remember, it's between 0 and 1. And then, because we flattened that, we uh, exploded that data into one data, we again have to put it back up into groups, okay? And that is because if I give that to the parameter, you can see it's not going to give you the answer. We're going to right click and graft it back, which means put it again into groups. So remember the trick is that the remap 
should not have data in groups because we want to compare that all together and then we will put that back into with graphs. You can also watch that flatten tutorial if you want to learn more about it. Okay, so let's just turn this off, uh, turn the centroids off, and now you can see how easy it is to uh, change the size change the number of these patterns and change. Let me just turn on the point attractor so you can see that. And this is the location of the point attractor and you can see that the stars are going to change. So let's just turn everything off and we will have these stars which you can use to offset them, uh, make it uh, the, if you want to give it a thickness so you can use an offset curve and remember you have to give the distance a minus x because you have to make it inside, okay? Uh, and give it a correct number based on your project. It's related to your project and your size. And you can see that it's going to also give it a thickness. So that was the tutorial of uh, how you can make those star patterns change. Let me just delete this. You can also download this example file and take a look at it. And do your exercise to understand this and also if you want to learn more you can go to our course and check out our lessons so that was the tutorial of uh, how to use the point attractor uh, thanks for watching remember to like this video it's going to help us uh, to promote our video to more users and also comments below uh, especially about the section which I explained before I started the tutorial because if you like it I'm going to use it in our future tutorials. Okay, see you next time.